what are per share ratios? I'm putting together an, another portfolio outside of my cannabis stocks portfolio, and I'm using value investment principles. And one of the tools I'm using to find stocks is apply per share ratios amongst many ratios that I'm using. And I'm narrowing down more and more different stocks by doing this, finding out which ones I feel will outperform the broader market. My belief is that the stock market is going to continue to move lower over the course of the next three, six, nine months. And then that might be a good time to start acquiring new stocks. Last week, I did a, in a previous video, I had done a um, ratio on total revenue per share. Now, this is an interesting ratio. And a lot of you really responded quite positively on this, thinking that this is really an, an interesting way of looking at things. What do you get when you buy a stock? And in regard to uh, revenue per share, simply you look at total number of shares, shares outstanding, price per share, and then trailing 12 months revenue. And what you do is you do some mathematics on that. And I have that video from previously, and we're going to look at that uh, same metric, but I'm going to add some things to it because I think this is important as well. What you, what you get out of market capitalization and total revenue is a per sh revenue per share, but you're also buying so much more out of a company. And so while looking at revenue per share is a very interesting metric, uh, a per share ratio, you get a lot more out of a company than just buying revenue. Goodwill, total equity. That's one way to look at things. And that's one of the things I'm going to be looking at today is I've broken down, I've kind of extended last week's, uh, my previous video on that, looking at not only revenue per share and the cost of revenue per share, but one of the things I did was I subtracted market capitalization from total equity. Actually, flip-flop subtracting total equity from market capitalization, which effectively gives you goodwill. Well, what is goodwill? Goodwill is you have all these assets and those assets have value. Your market capitalization is the total belief that the market believes your company is worth. But you have these assets and let's say market capitalization is a hundred million or a billion, whatever it might be. And your assets are only say, 10 million with a market cap of 100 million. You could say the remaining 90 million is goodwill, the ability to turn your assets into profits, generate revenue, create profits, share with the shareholders. So when you're looking at total revenue on a cost per share basis of buying that revenue, that is one metric, but there's also all these assets that you're getting in there. So although I like that metric, I want to caution that it's a metric. It's a way of measuring and comparing stocks. And if you actually saw that video that I had there, there's some interesting companies that all of a sudden your eyes pop. Uh, AYR Wellness. I keep seeing AYR Wellness pop up in ways that say that stock is really undervalued a lot. I've seen that two or three times now. So one of the things I'm looking at is let's take total market capitalization, let's subtract total assets and look at on a per share basis, what is the cost to buy that company looking at that metric? And I've got another metric in there as well. I'm looking at not only total uh, capitalization, but the goodwill and kind of dividing that all up. Let's jump into the spreadsheet. I'll explain everything to you, how you can look at this, how you can use this, put together your own spreadsheet of say a hundred stocks that you're looking at. Maybe they're in the same sector, maybe they're not, but then 
from a value investing standpoint, using these per share ratios, see which ones pop out as that's interesting. Let's jump into a spreadsheet. Okay, here we are inside my um, spreadsheet. And in this portion right here, these three right here, this is the information I had before where I have a list of, there's actually 104 different companies here. Um, and I have the trailing 12 month revenue, revenue per share, and the cost of revenue per share. How much does it cost to actually buy each bit of revenue on a per share basis? And that video did pretty well. A lot of you really liked that, reached out to me and said, wow, that was never saw that before. And actually, I've never seen this information before either. It may very well be that I am so OCD and hyper metric centric that, yeah, I created something. Uh, I, I don't think it's going to be the world's most embraced thing. So trust me, even I tempered my thinking on that. But this gives us an idea. And if you sort through this particular, um, let's go sort ascending. This gives us an idea of how much you're going to spend to gain on a per share basis, on a ratio basis, revenue. And there's some really interesting um, numbers that really kind of pop out. And if we go all the way down to the bottom, you find other interesting things that maybe you're paying a little too much on a relative basis. But if I scroll back down here, something like Sundial really pops out to me because, and this is where I sat there and I said, no, this particular metric uh, may not be that good simply because of Sundial. This one really popped out to me because Sundial is sitting on a ton of cash and a ton of total equity. So, um, This led me to start looking at things from a different perspective. Now, I've got 104 stocks. Here are my, uh, the symbol, the name, the symbol, the stock price, shares outstanding, market capitalization. And now I have something interesting. Total equity per share. Total equity cost of total equity per share. So in the case of 1933 Industries, which I have a mental note, someone reached out to me just, I think last week asking me about 1933 Industries. I do have a mental note. I will do an analysis on these guys very soon, if not tomorrow. Um, their total equity is 18.5 million. Their market capitalization is 8.79 million, which means they are tra trading well below book value. You could literally buy this whole company, sell off the assets, shrug your shoulders, and effectively double your money. If you could actually get that amount of money from total assets, total equity. How much total equity on a per share basis does it cost? You get in this column, total equity divides this by this. And it, you get total equity per share 0 0.036 cents. Stock price is 0 0.02, 0 0.02 cents. Cost of total equity per share is nearly 0.5 meaning 50 cents, all right? Should we sift downward, and before I do that, of the 104 stocks, 10 to 15 have not reported Q1, meaning January, February, March uh, of 2022. So that's what these guys are. They come in and total equity comes in at zero. That's merely because of the way I do my spreadsheet. I keep everything lined up. I could have put Q4 2021 in there. I didn't want to. Uh, nonetheless, and besides, some of these companies, uh, 
there are some that are very one or two that are very good and we're just waiting and waiting like your way cannabis c21 i think maybe c21 nonetheless sort ascending one of the things that you find is there are multiple companies whose total equity is negative not a good thing so we can move above those then we look at total equity for halo which is at 80 million we can discount this really quickly because halo reported its total equity based on holdings from aconda which since the time these guys reported this earnings aconda stock has been slaughtered so that one we can discount to zero um but if we keep moving lower you can start finding some companies that like unrivaled i actually like unrivaled i think they're going to do well market capitalization 37 million total equity 144 million you could corner this stock buy the whole thing up you know with your spare 37 million dollars probably sitting in your couch cushions um then sell off the equity and do pretty well so this is book value effectively but what we find is that cannabis stocks have been pushed down so dramatically that these are trading well below book value and maybe even below the cash they have in the bank and this gives us that ratio cost of total equity per share so you're basically paying a quarter for it's basically a quarter for every dollar of total cost of total equity per share so i have this spreadsheet up on my website feel free to get in there start digging around feel free to buy or build your own spreadsheet but there's more to a company than merely total equity in fact let us make this simple we will hide these really quickly let's sort of sending goodwill per share what is goodwill per share goodwill per share would be market capitalization minus total equity that remaining amount would be effectively the goodwill of the business so you have all this equity and you have market capitalization effectively total market capitalization should be above total equity the remaining portion of that market capitalization of course is goodwill your business's ability to take your total equity and generate revenue and profits this is what investors are really honestly truly buying into it's not so much that you have a hundred million dollars in equity as much as what you can do with that equity to generate revenues and profits so how much does that goodwill cost and in this column i've broken down of course uh, and I hid some of the information in here, but that's fine. Cost of goodwill per share. I think I want to go ascending. Cost of goodwill per share versus shares outstanding, stock price. Now, goodwill per share, you're going to find when you sift through these, you will find many in these cannabis stocks that have negative goodwill in fact nearly half what that tells us is that either the company has no real forward ability or the market has significantly underappreciated a company's potential that's analysis for another day asking that question about any particular stock but what this metric does and you can this is up on my spreadsheet uh this spreadsheet is up on my website feel free to just stop in there at any time and, and look at that 
This particular metric lets you know how appreciated goodwill is by the market in general. I have found multiple stocks where their market capitalization is below total equity, which would mean there is no goodwill. So the genesis of this particular video is I looked at revenue per share and the cost of revenue per share. The next step was to take market capitalization subtracting total equity. That should be goodwill. But when you look at cannabis stocks in particular, they are significantly underappreciated when it comes to just equity. Some of these stocks have literally no appreciation for what assets they're holding. However, and in that argument, that vein of argument, a lot of cannabis stocks are not profitable. Therefore, they're going to perpetuate losses for some period of time. Maybe they're EBITDA profitable, but not net earnings profitable. Maybe they're not even EBITDA prof profitable, which is the one of the biggest goals you can get to when you're a company first kind of scaling up. So if you are looking at stocks from these perspectives and asking the question, okay, I've got total market capitalization of, let's say, a, a hypothetical company, $1 billion. They've got total assets of $250 million. That means there's $750 million in effectively goodwill. Fine. What is the share price? That $750 million in goodwill, let's divide that up by all the shares. Then let's ask the question on a per share basis, what is the cost of the future of that company buying into that? You can use this information to compare different companies and start to kind of whittle out and ask the question, Who's got too expensive of goodwill and is it worth it? Based on ratios, asking the question, okay, you've got this company that's got a lot of goodwill or a company without a lot of goodwill on one end of the spectrum or another, you can use these per share ratios to break down what you're actually buying. Is any of these ratios, are any of these ratios necessarily be all end all? No. They're ratios. In and of themselves, they tell you one piece of a story. Maybe when you're looking at buying a stock, there are a hundred chapters to the story. You must look at all of them and analyze that yourself and say, ask the question, well, how much revenue per share am I getting? What is that cost of revenue per share? How much total equity am I getting? What is the cost per share of that total equity. Goodwill. What am I getting if I buy this stock with regard to Goodwill? Company may have a hundred million dollars in total equity, but be worth a billion dollars. That's 900 million in basically Goodwill. That's a lot. We can only say that statement if we compare other companies on a per share basis. When you start using these per share ratios and you start comparing companies, you have the ability to look at company A versus company B, which may not even be in the same industry, same sector. But now you have the ability to measure each other, apples to apples, oranges to oranges, answering the question, which one are you getting the most bang for your buck? Which one would advance further, faster, and potentially accelerating the stock price the most. Make sure you stop by my website and check out the full spreadsheet that I have up there. Make sure you hit the like and follow button. If this is the kind of content you're looking for, if you're trying to learn how to invest in stocks and how to use these kind of metrics to kind of weed through everything else, instead of just sort of throwing a dart at the board. Thanks so much for stopping by. Hit that like button, hit the follow button. We'll see you in the next video.